Hello, everyone. Saludos a todos. Happy Friday. So if I get to start out, um, I'm going to ask our two um, YOLA alumni, if you don't mind introducing yourselves really quickly, uh, just name where you're from and uh, maybe just a sentence about what you're doing right now, what you're up to. Yeah. So um, hi, everyone. My name is Laura. I'm from L.A., born and raised. Uh, I currently work as an administrative assistant at one of our local YOLA sites in East L.A. Um, and I occasionally pop up and help with uh, <laughs> YNF and YNI things. So I'm excited to be here today. I'm Diana. Um, I'm from L.A., also born and raised. And I, you said I'm a YOLA alumna, and I now I work as a project assistant um, with YOLA, and so I've helped with the festival, with the institute. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here and talk to Manisod. Uh, again, my name is Angelica Cortez. I work at the Phil as well and work on YOLA National, and I'm just super honored and excited to introduce the infamous La Marisol. Uh, thank you again for being here with us, Marisol. Uh, so I think just to start, can you tell us a little bit about your musical path? Where did it begin? Um, what are you doing now? What are the twists and turns that you took along the way? Uh, let's let's okay. hear a little bit about you. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, um, hi, everyone. My name is, is Marisol, uh, Marisol Hernandez, and I go by La Marisol, uh, and I'm the singer for La Santa Cecilia. Uh, I was born and raised in, in Los Angeles, California. My, my parents came from... Uh, from Mexico and, and uh, in the 70s, and, and they met out here uh, in, in Los Angeles. And uh, I love music since I can remember. I love music since, since I was a little kid. I, I, you know, I just, I always loved music. My mother uh, used to sing at home. Um, you know, she used to sing, uh, you know, Juan Gabriel and Rocio Durcal and listen, listening to Caleb and things. So I grew up listening to her singing and I know she had dreams of, of, of like pursuing music when she was younger. Um, and my dad, my dad was also a, a huge music lover. Uh, he, you know, like he played guitar, he, he tried to learn requinto and, and he was a very bad musician. Like he sang <laughs> todo desafinado, like out of key <laughs> and he wouldn't get the chords right sometimes and things like that. But he always was so like passionate about music and, and, uh, and he just he loved it. So I feel like I got my my this this love for music at such a young age from my parents. And uh, and I feel like I always wanted to be a singer. Like, that's what I wanted to be since I was a little kid. Like, I never thought I want to be a doctor. I want to be I just like just wanted music. And I had these dreams of like, maybe one day I'll be a performer. And although I was a very, very shy kid, um, but it wasn't until I was maybe 14 years old where I really felt like the calling for music. And I think it was probably uh, watching Selena, Selena y los Dinos on TV. Uh, I was living in Mexico at the time and, uh, and I saw her on, on TV and man, just like her vocals and, and, and the music she was, she was singing, like the cumbia, the ranchera, the, like those were things that my mom loved that we heard at, at, you know, at house parties and things like that. Um, but what really, uh, like, it got me was was when I heard her speak. And uh, when I heard her speak, her, like, she spoke like I did, like, kind of broken Spanish, like, kind of in Spanglish. And I really, like, connected to her. And I thought, oh, my God, like, here's this amazing singer. I can hear... I can hear the R&B influence. I can hear the soul influence. I can hear the American musical influence in her, but she's singing rancheras and cumbia and uh, Tex-Mex music. So that just really like hooked me. Like I just felt a connection to her. So that's when I really like decided I want to be a singer too. I want to sing. And, and it was when I turned 15 that I came back from Mexico and, and I told my parents, this is what I want to do. I want to be a singer. And, uh, they didn't really have resources to say, hey, I'm going to send you to school or, hey, you're going to take lessons from so and so. They, their way of supporting me was was kind of just, you know, my dad worked at Olvera Street, this little like marketplace in, in, in the heart of, of Los Angeles in, in, in downtown. It's like a very touristy spot. And um, my grandfather came there in the 60s. My father worked there and there's always musicians, you know, like 
trio musicians, mariachi musicians, buskers, busking all up and down the street. So my dad, you know, my dad said, pues vente a la calle y volver a cantar, aquí vas a aprender mucho. You know, come down to Olvera Street to uh, to sing with the with these musicians and and uh, and you'll learn a lot. So uh, that was, I guess, their way of supporting me and supporting my dreams of becoming a singer. And and um, I'm infinitely grateful to them for for uh, for for yeah for telling me go go sing at Olvera Street, go bus, go learn how to sing like that. And and uh, and for me, it was it was it's like my main school. You know, is 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 all the music and I learned. Um, on Olvera Street, all the all the traditional Mexican and Latin American music, and I learned how to how to pass the basket around. I learned how to sing really loud. I learned how to memorize many lyrics so that I could have a good repertoire to sing and to perform and to play at gigs. And and um, yeah, so that's that's how I you know like that's kind of like the you know how my upbringing musically, and um, you know being a teenager living in the in the United States, I was. I was a, uh, you know, I was like going to Hollywood High School. I was living in East Hollywood, and I was going to Olvera Street on the weekends uh, to sing traditional music. But you know, like during the week, I was a very, I was like a, any other all American kid. I loved, I loved rock and roll. Like I loved rock and roll. I loved classic, classic rock. I loved punk rock music. Like during the week, I was very like you know, with like my army jacket or I would wear black. I was all about this like rocker, rockera identity. And on the weekends I would go and I would sing traditional music and, and the musicians, my teachers would, you know, they'd expect me to dress in traditional outfit to sing. And, and, and I remember feeling very torn about that because I felt like I was two different people. Like during the week with my friends, I was all into you know, like we were listening to No Doubt or Led Zeppelin and things like that. And on the weekend, I was listening and singing Mercedes Sosa and Juan Gabriel. And uh, many times, like my my lives would 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 cross, right? Like my friends would come with their family to Olvera Street, and I'd be singing at the restaurant, and I would feel this like, oh, they're they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna realize I'm not like I'm not a rocker today. You know, they're gonna think I'm not like hard hardcore. You know. And I would feel this like this weird, yeah, like I was living two different lives. And uh, and uh, as I grew older, I, I just I felt this need uh, to to bridge to bridge these two identities that I had, these two loves that I had um, for me, you know, for music. And and um, and that's when when, you know, with my bandmates, Pepe, also and Alex, we started La Santa Cecilia and uh, we created this band with with the with with the desire to create music our own way and to tell our own stories to create our our own music to to play to write our own songs and to mix that 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 experience of being bicultural of being mexican american of being influenced by american pop culture and music and also um traditional mexican and latin american music which is something that we all like share a, a big passion for and we started La Santa Cecilia like 13 years ago. And we started busking on Olvera Street, playing coffee shops, playing fundraisers for our friends, parties and uh, and clubs. And, and then eventually, we, you know, we were able to come and play at the Walt Disney Concert Hall. And just so many, we've a- accomplished so many beautiful things, so many dreams that, that I'm like very, very grateful for. And And that's how I came here. That's how I'm here with you all today, you know? That's awesome. I think it's super interesting to hear how you began a lot of this musical career through performance, even like that was one of the first things it sounds like you learned because you immediately started on the job, right? Like started performing on Olvera in coffee shops, like versus I think at least for me, like that was like the end of it. Like, oh, now I have to focus on smiling while playing, you know, Oh yeah, (laughs) simple things. Yeah, it's super interesting. Um, and anyway, so a question this brought up for me was uh, who now seeing the transformation that you've gone through, right? Going from Olvera to Walt Disney and like these bigger venues, who is your music aimed for now? Um, is there anyone, any particular community you really want, you really want to listen to your music or is it just, you know, whoever takes it? <laughs> yeah. Um, when we started the band, we, we, you know, like we had, 
we we had all been like we were all musicians that were playing like and you know I was singing with Pepe in a trio and we were doing you know quinceañeras like weddings you know funerals and things like that the other guys were playing in salsa Latin jazz bands and so we were all already working in music thankfully right like making a living but um but what what we wanted to do was mix it up and and create our own thing and we felt like at first it felt like something really strange and like, just like we try to, we'd move like change genres and like who knows how many times in one song, you know? Um, and we didn't, we didn't really think about who we were making music for. We, we felt like we were just trying to express ourselves and uh, yeah, we didn't really think like, yeah, it, you know, we want a certain kind of people. We just wanted to create music, create well, we didn't even know what we were making. We were, it's like we were just making some we were like what is this I have no idea and a lot of the times we'd play at, when we started we'd play at places and people would look at us funny like what is well like who like what what is like is this traditional Mexican music is this rock what like what and I could we could sense that people were like confused you know but slowly we started we started uh seeing and uh, connecting with people that felt like that felt like the same uh had the same experience the same experience as us that were like yeah i love banda machos i love ranchera music but uh i also love you know like hip hop or we we just like we found that there was a lot of people that shared this identity and 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 we we saw it happening at we started playing at this little club right down the street from Walt Disney Concert Hall it's called La Cita and we we started playing there and then we started noticing that there was a following of people that felt the same way like kind of that like the same music and uh and that's uh that's when we realized all right cool there's there is there is uh a place for us to share right to to, to share our music and and uh but now that we've had years to to write and to record and we just I feel like our goal is just to share music to whoever has an open heart and open mind and open ears like it, it's not specifically to a, a certain group of people, we like to, for us, it's like the more the merrier, you know, like I love music from all over the place, all, all kinds of music. And so uh, we just would like to make the best music. And I feel like I'd like to make music that maybe when I'm, you know, older or when I'm a little viejita, when I'm an old, old, old lady that I can still feel like proud of what we did, you know, and that hopefully it'll inspire or affect someone in a positive way or, you know, or let the, let it be, let our music be a part of their life. So, um, but it's open. We play music for the people, for whoever, for whoever wants to listen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I think a lot of us can relate upon that, you know, like we're our parents, we grew up hearing our parents' music, but then we also have like, or the music from our school and our friends. So that that's, yeah, it's awesome. And I, and I like that you're, because you're playing venues like Walt Disney and the Hollywood Bowl, you're like opening that music or that genre to, you know, bigger audiences. Um, so, but what, a, can you tell us a little bit of how you make your music accessible to like people who aren't able to like go to Walt Disney concert or aren't able to because of financial reasons or whatever, how are you making your music accessible to them? Something that, that, uh, that I, re I like, I remember telling my dad, you know, I rem like being, I was maybe 17 or 18 and I had started in this like rock band and, and my dad would tell me, says, what are you doing? Like you sing nice. Like, why are you singing that music? And, and I would tell him, dad, like, stop. Like, I just want to make my own music. And, you know, like, I'm never going to be one of those artists that you see on TV, dad. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be like a Grammy winner, dad. Like I'm not going to, and I would get like upset because I'd tell him these things. And because I didn't even know like what reach I could have with music. I, I had no idea. Right. Um, later, like all these things happen and we, yeah, we find ourselves at places like the, like the Walt Disney concert hall, like, you know, playing at the Hollywood bowl and, and uh, the way that I guess the way that we make our music accessible is that we play like everywhere, you know, like there is no. And, and since the beginning of, of, of the band, because we had already been performing and playing, um, we never thought, oh, that stage is is 
too small for us. Oh, that gig is too small. Like we're so much better than that. Like we never, like we didn't think like that. We were just, we were just grateful to have, to find a space where we could play our music, you know? And, and, and that's the thing with music that you just never know. Like you, like you just never know what you're going to, what, what you're going to really get into and what will the consequences, the, the beautiful consequences of what you did. Like, uh, like I remember we, we had, you know, we were just playing like fundraisers and things and someone invited us to play at a, at an accordion festival. Uh, it was like an Eagle rock and it was at one of those like salones, like those halls, you know, and it was, it was an accordion festival. So we thought, oh, cool. Like, yeah, our, our, you know, Pepe plays accordion. We play cumbias and norteñas. Let's go do this. And we get to the, we get to the hall and it's, it's like all German, German accordion music, polkas, and a, a lot of German people. Like, I mean, there was not a lot of brown people there, you know, and we were freaked out. We were like, Oh my God, what, like, they're going to boo us off of this little stage right here. I mean, what, like, what are, what are we doing here? We don't fit in here. Right. But the moment that we, that the accordion started playing and we started singing, they got into it. And there was like 20 people at this accordion festival and they were all like older folk, you know, but one, we didn't get booed off the stage. And two, we, there was, there happened to be like, um, someone that worked like connecting, like putting music into TV shows, which is another way of like making a living through music that I had no idea. And she worked for the show called Weeds on Showtime and she liked our music and she said, hey, we'd love to play, you know, some of your music on, on our show. And we were like, wow, that's so cool. And that's kind of like what, what kind of, you know, it was kind of a lesson of like, you think that maybe this place is not for you, but you never know the opportunities that could come that can arise from doing something like this, you know? And, and I feel like that's been something that we've learned and that has kept us like going and growing because we don't, we keep an open mind of where we're going to play. And, you know, and I always tell like younger musicians, like there is, there is no, the, there is no stage too small for you. You know what I mean? Like, and I've seen artists that are huge artists that I love that, that, they don't see it like that, you know? It's like every moment that you can connect with people through music is a beautiful moment. And, and you know, it, whether you're at the Hollywood Bowl or you're busking on, on a corner on the street, you know what I mean? It's like, there's there's value and there's beauty in all of that, in all the levels, different levels of music. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Uh, I love that that story started with you arguing with your dad, right? About like, don't tell me what to sing. <laughs> uh, and what, I, so what that makes me think of, um, when I was younger, for sure, I was like, uh, anytime my mom was playing mariachi music or salsa, I was like, mom, like, turn it down. Like, that is not <laughs> what I want to roll up to school with, right? And uh, <laughs> just chill, mom. Uh, but um you know, and for me, like listening to all of your different albums, like you went from Buena Ventura to Amari Vivir. And to me, that was like such a hard switch. Uh, you that that album has all of the old things that like I listened to growing up. And so I'm just curious if you could talk a little bit about what that experience was like. Right. What was it like to go go straight back to like the old mariachi songs that I think we all kind of grew up with? Yeah. You know, what's funny that you say that, right? That you talk about like this. I mean, yeah, like you had the same kind of experience with your parents where you'd be like, no, please don't bump that while you're driving me home, like picking me up from school and stuff. Okay. I have a four-year-old daughter now. Right. And I'm playing my jarana and I'm singing and I'm like, I want to share this with you, baby. Like I love some carocho. I love traditional music. And she's like, uh, mom, she's all into the trolls right now. The trolls world tour movie. Like we saw that we loved it. It was really cool. And she's like, mom, I like pop, mom. Like, I'm into pop. That's what I do, you know? And so I find myself, like, in the same, like, where my dad was and my parents were. Like, now I'm, like, looking at this kid, like, uh, what do you mean? You're like, like, no, you got to like all this other stuff. So now it's, like, my goal. Like, I need to share as much as I can with this girl. No matter what faces she makes, one day she will thank me for that, you know, for all the music I shared with her, I hope, you know, because now... I thank my parents for all the beautiful things they shared with me with music. Um, 
Yeah. So we, you know, like when we, when we started the band and, and, and we started recording, yeah, it was all about like mixing genres and, and, you know, doing everything, like just trying to, to change, do, doing things different. Right. Um, but for, for us, for, you know, for the members in the band, we like our school and the first music we listened to was the, was the boleros, was the rancheras, right? Because that's what was playing at home. Well, that's what we were listening to. And for me, it was like, this is how I became a singer. I became a singer singing boleros and rancheras. Um, and uh, yeah, we did, we did Buenaventura. We did, uh, we did Nochecitas. We did Treinta Dias. We did uh, Buenaventura. And then, and then we just like felt this need to, to um to go back to our to to our roots to go back to where how we started because uh our accordion player pepe he was all he also like he before he played the accordion he was playing requinto romantico which is what you play in, in a trio and that's how i met him as a teenager we were both awkward teenagers but we were all playing that music that style so after we did buenaventura we just we thought like it's time for us to record these songs because they're such a big part of our life. Like when we get together, um, thankfully, like I still, like we still love each other. We're, we're bandmates and we see each other all the time, but we still hang out. Like we would like to hang out with each other and have barbecues and, and, uh, and we do, we, and, and we do this Bohemia. Like we just, we gather around a fire, we take out the, the guitar and we always come back to these songs. Like we always find ourselves late at night singing these songs. I do you remember this one? Oh, I remember my dad used to love this song. Oh, what about this? And that's kind of how it started, like, and how we 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 came up with this idea of of doing a Mari Vivir the album, and and uh, and when we told our producer that we wanted to do to create this album, he came up with the idea of going and doing a live a live and taking it like really to how we started when we were buskers and we would sing on the street. So he says, why don't you? Why don't we record the, the album live? And why don't we record the album in Mexico City and go and do it in Mexico? And for us, that was like, oh my, that was like, wow, yes. Because, because like playing music, growing up here in, in LA, you know, you have this, I feel like I, like, like, uh, como se dice, como que de la nostalgia, like, uh, like, like my parents, like they, they have nostalgia for their, the place that they left, right. The, the country that they left. Um, and I feel like we carry that. Like it, it just, it's just, you just, you're born with this, like, ah, this, this, you miss the motherland. And for me, it's Mexico. Right. Um, so for us to be able to bring, to bring our instruments and to play in Mexico, being that we are born in the United States or, we grew up here in the United States and we're like Mexico Americanos, Chicanos, whatever, you know, to be able to like bridge that and, and, and to go to Mexico and take our music, take the music over there and play there on the streets was like a dream come true because uh, it's something that we always wanted to do was to, to, to be able to, to, to make a bridge, como hacer un puente, you know, because sometimes we feel like, Oh, you know, the, the border is such a, like, it's such a, something that, that just separates so much. And we're always there. You always hear negative things, all these bad things, but it's like, we as a people, we're so connected to our roots and to our traditions and to our language and our music. And, and uh, it was a very special thing to return to Mexico and being musicians and making music, you know? Yeah. Hearing you talk about like how you went back to your roots um, and like your, the changes in your musical journey make me think about like, you know, like us, we we're, we start off with classical music, right? And then if we want to go back to the roots, that could be scary. Or if we want to try something new, it could be scary. There's also there's always a possibility of like failing. Um, so, do you mind like sharing with us like a time that you that you failed or or something didn't go the way that you thought or wanted it to go? Um, how did you like deal with it? How did you recover? Yeah, um, I mean, I feel like. <clears throat> I think that you can see things as failures, but I feel like you can also see them as lessons, you know, and I, and I like to, and sometimes when we feel like we fail, we get hung up on that failure. And it's sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to get out of the funk, you know? Um, so I, I like to see things as like 
like obstacles, but but also like lessons, lessons learned, you know, and, and it's not easy like this. It's a weird, I feel like being in music and having a musical career is not, I don't see it so much as like winning and losing or, or triumphs and failures. It's just, it's like, it's a roller coaster. It's like a, 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 yeah, like a roller coaster. You go up, you go down, you, and sometimes when you're up, you feel funny. Like you, you can't be completely happy. And sometimes when you're down, you know, you feel like, yeah, you feel down, but it, it's like, it, uh, it's hard to explain. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to explain to you, but, but I don't see it as failures, I guess is what I'm saying. It's como, como chances to, to learn. And, 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 uh, and I've had many moments where I felt very scared about music and, and my career. And many times I feel like I don't belong or like, what am I doing here? Am I good enough? Um, I mean, like I was, I remember being 18 and being in my first band and it was a rock band and, and I wrote my very first songs and they were all super sad love songs and the music wasn't very good. Um, but because we were young and no say we didn't, we, you know, we didn't get along. These, these guys like decided that they were going to kick me out of the band and that they were going to steal my songs, right? Like they were going to like take the songs. And that was like so heartbreaking. It was like, ouch, like I thought these guys were my friends and now they're taking my songs and my little teeny tiny songs, you know? And I felt like, like I failed, you know? And, and I cried to my dad and my dad was like, what are you doing with those cabrones anyway? You know, like <laughs> I told you you shouldn't sing that. <laughs> um. But you know, it was funny that like, I, I, I like, you know, I, I hit out for a little bit. I, you know, I went to Mexico and I came back and I saw this band playing. They were playing some kind of battle of the bands and I happened to be there and I was like, oh, I should leave. I should leave. I should, I should not, I don't want to see this, these guys. I don't want to see this band, but something said, no, like, don't, don't run away. Don't run away from this awkwardness don't run away like face it like what like so you're not in the band anymore so they got another singer and they might be singing your songs like so what like just take it like a ver qué. and I stood there and I and I and they started their set and yeah they played two of the songs that I wrote with them right and it was like first it was like yeah she doesn't sing as good as I do right like the hater right like yeah but but it wasn't so much that it was more like that girl is singing my melody, like the words that I wrote and the feelings that I had, she's singing that right now. And that does not feel bad. That feels pretty awesome. Like I wrote that and she's singing that that's pretty, pretty cool. And so you take, you, you have a choice to focus on the, on the negative or you have the choice to focus on the positive. And there's always something to gain from every experience and every challenge, you know? Um, and uh, so that was one. And, and it wasn't a failure. It was like, I'm glad I'm not in that band anymore. Like I, I found the bandmates that I was supposed to be with, you know? And uh, the same thing with uh, when I became a mother and when I was, when I, you know, I, I, I got, you know, I was going to, I was going to have my baby and I, and I was pregnant and I was very scared of, of telling my bandmates and telling my record label that, that, that I was going to have a baby. And right when we were going to release uh, uh, Buena Ventura, our, our album Buena Ventura. And, and I felt like guilty, like, am I a failure for, for wanting to pursue being, being a mother? Like, like, do I have to choose between being a mother uh, or a, or a musician? That was, that was very hard for me to deal with myself, to accept myself, for me to accept myself and say, no, you can do this. Like you can continue your career and, and, and grow and you can like be a mom. Um, and for a long time, I thought that maybe that wasn't something that was possible. And I was hesitant to tell my bandmates and my record label and all that. But thankfully, they were all very supportive. They were, they were all so supportive. My friends, my bandmates, you know, my label, they were all like, you got this. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, work, we'll work with you and see what, what you need, like whatever you need, you know. And thankfully, I had a great pregnancy. My daughter was great to me while she was in my belly. And I toured. 
I promoted the album and I toured. My daughter was born December 13 and my last performing gig was November 1st, you know? So for Dia de los Muertos. So there I was like with a huge belly. I recorded the Calaverita video. I'm in like a coffin. I'm totally pregnant in that video. Um, and, uh, and it was awesome, man. And I feel, and now looking back, I go, what was I so scared of? You know, like, like now I feel like I'm proud. I'm proud of, of, of overcoming those fears of like thinking that I can't do it or that I'm going to fail at this. And, and, uh, and here I am like, man, my daughter's four years old now. And she's like, totally like a tour, a tour kid, a tour baby, you know? And now she's like telling me like, mom, I miss, I miss the road. Like I want to go to a green room, I want to go to a hotel, <laughs> things like that. But always focus on the positive. There's always positive, you know, when in any hang up in any failure, you might think there's always a way out. There's always a way for you to focus on, on the good things. And there's always, it's a, it's a learning experience, you know, and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. No. Yeah. Um, it's just I feel like we're gonna go through life and we're gonna um you know always experience the feeling of failure but it's all about how we if we like you said like we have to learn to see it different ways we need to learn how to cope with it and it goes down to like self-care right and so with our institute students we've been talking about self-care a lot you know so making sure you're taking care of yourself mentally physically so how are you taking care of yourself during the quarantine I think care of your mental health. Yeah. Um, and let me tell you that like this quarantine, like it's, it's, a, I mean, uh, I'm sure like you all know, I mean, it's affected a lot of people. We're all going through this, like every single person, like everyone we are, we are. And, th and this is what shows me how connected we are, like as, as humans from all over the world, from all over the country, we're, we're going through this pandemic all together, you know? And, and this is a traumatic experience for everyone. And we're all gonna deal with it in a different way. And we're all feeling a lot of things. And I can tell you from my personal experience that it's been, it's been definitely hard because like I'm a working musician. Like I make my livelihood performing on stage. And the, what brings me most like, like alegría and what makes me more like, what's my passion is to perform, to travel. And to go from place to place and perform for people and connect and like run around stage and have a blast, right? And in a few months, right? Like in March, like that, it just all like, like my, my calendar and everything just like says fumo. Like, uh, like I'm sure for all of you at school and your plans and your things that you all had to do. And I just saw how my calendar just like vanished and it, and it really like, I had moments where I was like, it brought me down, you know? And where I was, where I'm, I'm home and, and it's like, well, now I have my, my, my duties of being at home, which is like, I have a four-year-old, I have to continue uh, schooling her, right? Like, or cleaning. And like I tell my partner, sometimes I'm like, man, I used to be an artist. Like I wasn't just the cleaning and the cook lady, you know, like, um, but it's just like things that we all go through. And, and I miss my, I miss my friends. I miss my family. I miss going out, but but at the same time, the way that I take care of myself is is by by continuing to like learn like, uh, you know, like uh, I got this. Uh, I don't know how to read music, but I, I want to learn new songs. So I, I like I downloaded an app, guitar tabs to learn songs. So now I'm like I'm playing my harana. I'm learning new chords. I'm learning new songs. I'm learning how to play, trying to learn how to play other music on this on this instrument. Um, and uh and just and just like man appreciating all the little things you know the little things like like going out for a walk with my kid you know or like eating lunch outside or talking to my friends on zoom you know with my bandmates and like that that like we need that you know and i know that we're all like social distancing but we don't like it's physical i feel like it's more we need to physically distance ourselves right for our own for nuestro bien but uh but we don't have to be socially distanced from each other. And we should definitely like reach out. And, and I reach out to my mom, I reach out to my friends and I'm like, I am like, I'm so sick of being home. Like I feel sometimes like I'm a bird in a little cage. Like I'm a singing bird. I love to sing, I love to be free, but right now I'm in a little cage. So how am I gonna make this place uh, a better place, right? And I mean, and as you can see the back, like my house is a mess right now. This is our like little studio. and. 
Right now we're working on a, on, on making a, a music video for a, a, a project that I, I, I have going uh, called La Marisol and the Love Notes and just staying creative. I'm coloring, coloring books with my daughter. You know, she's got her coloring books. I got my coloring books. We paint, we're baking. You just got to keep busy and enjoy this time because maybe because this is going to pass. And before you know it, we're going to go, we're going to be back on the, on the train of like, and then one day you'll be like, oh, remember when I had all this time? Like, I should have read that book. I should have learned that song. I should have tried that one. Like, I, so I, right now I'm thinking it like that. Like, I know that in, in a few months or next year, I'll be like so busy again that I'll be like, man, I remember those days when I could just hang out at home and like tend to the garden and things like that, you know, so. I guess it's like focusing on the little things that make you happy, you know, and, and also going through, if you feel down, if you feel sad, let that out, man, let it cry, scream, run. Like we, we're humans. We're, you know, we're not robots. We got to let it, we're, we're growing beings, you know? So feel it, go through it, write it out, like let it out, you know? One more question from Laura, um, and then and then we'll open the floor. We have a couple of students who have submitted questions. If that's okay, Marisol. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I guess in hearing all of this, your story, it's super inspirational. You know, I think there's a lot where both Diana and I, at least, can um, very much relate to it. So can Angelica, I'm sure. A question that came up in my head was, is there an ultimate goal for you, um, specifically moving forward from the pandemic? Is there something you really want to work on, whether it be like having a greater purpose for your music, your performing in your work, or like balancing work life maybe a little better moving forward? Or, you know, what are the things that you hope to do once, you know, like you said, you're free from this little cage? <laughs> I mean, I have like, thankfully, like I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of gold still, a lot of dreams. I mean, we, you know, like with La Santa Cecilia, we've accomplished a lot of things and, and, but I feel like there's so much more, like we've never, you know, like La Santa Cecilia has never played in Europe before, you know, like I want to take our music to Japan. I want to go to, uh, uh, like one of my dreams is to travel. I love America, like from top to bottom. And there's so much music you know, from, from top to bottom. And my dream is to be able to travel and with music, hopefully, but to take our music and, and, and also to receive music and, and learn from, you know, and go to Colombia and Peru and Brazil. And I mean, Argentina, there's so many places that I still want to go and, and, and travel and take music, take our music to, um, that's always been one of my dreams, right? To, to, to take La Santa Cecilia to, to make music and travel the world because I love traveling. It's one of my passions in life is to travel and to meet new people. Es lo que me encanta. Um, but uh, at the same time, you know, like to keep creating music, to be able to, to write music about what we're going through and to be as honest as possible. You know what I mean about what we're going through? And I think that as musicians, as creatives, you know, we're living in, in these in these really tough times, but but I think this is a time for us as as creatives, artists, musicians, writers, to to kind of help the world move into this next like we're like change needs to happen, you know? It's obvious. Like we need to become more aware that we're all connected and that change that that, that what was working for us then is not gonna work for us for the future. And I think that that we as uh, artistas have that little like touch to like, you know, the songs that we write, the messages that we share, the things that we that we put out there in the world have a way of affecting people. Because I know that I felt that from, you know, growing up listening to like Bob Marley and the beautiful words that he would share or Mercedes Sosa or, um, you know, like Bob Dylan. Like there's just th th this music can can change and can help move change, no? So I, I hope that we can continue to write from that perspective of hoping to change and affect the world in a positive way. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I just, and I wanna see my kid grow, you know? Like I wanna and, and inspire her as much as I can and, and share life with her and share life experiences with her, which I think is the most important thing. And what I thank my parents for is like 
mostly like all the things that we got to share with each other is that together, you know, with my family, with my friends. So yo creo que lo importante, the, the important thing in life is I think to always continue to dream, you know, to have dreams. Like, like when I was a kid and I still like, I'm still such a dreamer. Like I dream of doing things, uh, you know, like I, I always wanted to sing with an, with con una orquesta, like the 1940s, like the 1950s, like Celia Cruz. Like I always wanted to do that and I got the chance to do it. And now I'm working on this album and I'm going to be, you know, making a music video for this project and, and always just continue to dream, you know, like it, it's never, it's never done. It's never, it's never like, oh, I'm done. Like, no, like there's just so much more always, you know, I'm a dreamer and I'm going to keep dreaming. I love it. Thank you so much, Marisol. And uh, just so you know, you're getting, you got a lot of love in the chat. <laughs> uh, lots of people telling you how much they're inspired. Um, oh, thank you guys. Thank you. I mean, anything that I can share and help and, you know, be a part of you guys growing and, and going forward and, I mean, it, it, it excites me to, to, to share anything I can with you all, but, but it excites me also to know like what you all are going to do, you know, and I, I know that you're all, your cameras are off and I see all these names and I'm just excited to see what you all are going to turn into and what you guys are going to do with music, with your life, with your dreams. Just go out there and do it, man. Life is, is, is the world is there for, for you, you know, take it, like do what you want with it. I love it. Uh, how about we hear from one student? Is that cool? And then uh, I know that you have a stop at one. Um, so maybe we can hear from one student. They have a question from you. And then uh, we'll switch over to your um, performance. Mm -hmm. um, Maria Gonzalez, uh, I know you put a question into the chat. Do you want to come on camera um, and ask your question? And if not, that's totally fine. I can also read it out loud. <laughs> Go for it, Maria. Okay, so after the speech that you gave us, I have one question. And I was, I attended in the chat, so I said, many immigrants feel the need to, like, fit into the culture that America practices regarding music, traditions. So I want to ask you, what would you recommend for the people that want to embrace their foreign culture, but are afraid to be judged by stereotypes? Wow, that's an interesting question. That's a great <laughs> question. I feel like, you know, like when, when you do things with love, you do things with, like, you, you open your heart, you know, to, to accept, like, music, to accept culture, to understand, to observe. Um, I like I'm Mexican American, right? Like I was I was born here in the United States. My parents are from Mexico. I love Mex I love Mexican music. I love traditional Mexican music. But I also very I feel I feel super American, man, you know? I grew up listening to all the like American music and I and I love like I love jazz. I love Ella Fitzgerald. I love all that. And I feel like when you're loving something, you should never feel you should never feel like judged, you know? I like I love I love Afro Caribbean music. I love uh, Peruvian Peruvian music. I play a, I play a jarana, which is a, a, a traditional instrument from Veracruz, from the southern part of Veracruz. And I'm not from Veracruz. Like I'm not. I wish I was. Right. Um, I'm not from Veracruz. Pero like I I do like I'm I'm only trying to learn and appreciate the music. And when you come from a place of love and appreciation. I don't think you, you know, like, I don't think you should ever feel like people are judging you, you know, and, and we should never care about what the other person thinks, because if we, if we worried about what other people think, we're never going to do anything, you know? So I, I think that you should always just follow your heart, follow your, your, your gut tells you, you like you, we have an inner like guide that tells us this feels good. This doesn't feel good. Why does this feel weird? You know, like, pero cuando, when you do it from your heart, it's like, you, and you feel something good, it's like, you, you can't deny that, you know? And uh, don't let anyone ever make you feel judged, you know? And, and, and likewise, don't judge people, you know? Because uh, that's not cool either. Um, and that doesn't let you be free either. So uh, um, I hope that helped, that answered your question. Yeah, and I had another part to the question that I also typed. I said, how does it feel like to be able to Reflect like the passion that you have for all of these different type of cultures through singing. It feels great. It feels great. It like I love it. I love it. And and 
And I want to tell you that when I was growing up, when I was younger and, and, uh, and I was in school, uh, I was a very shy, shy girl. And I was like my, like I had like, like stomach aches every morning. I had stomach aches because I was so nervous and I was so shy. I couldn't look people in the eye. I was, I was, I was kind of a mess, you know, I was going through a lot of stuff, but, um, and I feel like because I was so scared, I was so scared of, 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 of what my people think or, or, or scared of myself that I, I felt like I held back a lot. I was in high school. I was in a performing arts magnet, but, but I would never dare to like audition for the musical theater, you know, or I wouldn't audition because I was scared because I thought, Oh, I, I, I sing boleros and rancheras. Like, what am I going to do trying to sing West side story and things like that? You know, that I felt like, like, I don't know how to do, I'm not a dancer. I'm not, and if I could go back, I would, I would not think like that. And I would, and I would, I would be a little bit braver and say like, no, go try it out. Yeah. You might not get picked, but at least you try it and you might learn, you know, something new. Um, now that I'm older, I think, no, no, I need, you know, like, yo quiero, yo quiero aprender todo. Yo quiero compartir. I, I, I just, I love life. I love music. I love people. So I, I just want to continue to, to, to connect, you know, with that, with those experiences, because when I leave this earth, like I won't, I will not take anything. I won't take the Grammy. I won't take my harana. I won't take anything. I'm going to take my experiences and the love and the things that filled my soul and my heart, you know? So I just want to continue to do that, you know, and, and to continue to learn and to give, to give music, to give my energy out to the world and to receive it, to, to receive it, because that's important too, you know, que eso te alimenta el alma and it energizes you, you know, always, especially when you're in music with a group of people. Oh man, I love that, that energy that, you know, we're all breathing together. We're all pushing. We're all on the same rhythm. We're all, ew, that's, and that's why I love being in a band like, uh, uh, you know, it's cool to be, a, a solo artist, I guess, but I love playing in a band. I love it. I love the teamwork, you know? Thank you so much. And thank you, Maria, for your question. We yeah, great it. questions, Maria. Thank you. So Marisol, uh, I think we're all out of time for questions, but if I remember, are you good to share out some music with us? Yeah, yeah, I'll see. Yeah. I mean, if you guys have another question, I'm down. It's Okay. Any other questions from, uh, from our... Um, YNFers, uh, feel free to type it in the chat, or you can also use the raise hand feature if, if you know how to do that. We'll be keeping an eye out as uh, Marisol's tuning. Yeah. <laughs> and I must say, I gotta change the strings on this karana, and excuse, 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 uh, sorry to when, anyone that can hear my lousy tuning of instrument. <laughs> So should I sing a little song to say hasta luego? I think that sounds perfect. Okay. All right. Well, um, this is a jarana. Just want to share. This is my this is my favorite instrument. I really don't know how to play guitar. Uh, I don't know why. I, I wish I would have learned. But uh, something called to me when I when I when I started listening to the music of Son Carocho, um, the poetry, the rhythm, uh, and and I'm still like very much uh, an, an apprentice to this instrument and to this music, um, pero con mucho cariño. Te ruego. 
sí, que sí, que no Unos cantan porque saben Otros cantan por cantar Yo canto porque termine La tristeza y el penar Yo canto porque termine La tristeza y el penar Beautiful, Marisol. Thank uh, you, Angelica. Thank you so, so much, uh, Marisol. Uh, so I'm going to do two things. One, can you just name the song real quick? Yeah, the song is called El Sikisiri. Um, and it's a song that usually is played in the fandango when, when there's a, there, it's called a fandango when a, a bunch of people get together and play uh, this instrument called the jarana. There's also a requinto instrument, a bass instrument, a harp. And the women dance on a wooden platform on the tarima, and that's called the fandango, and it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and uh, and yeah, the song is called Siki City. And usually, you play the song like once you feel like the fandango is starting, like the party is getting started. Uh, you play el Siki el Siki City, and it kind of just like starts everything. And 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 I love that people just jump in and sing and sing versos, and and it's a call and response and if you guys want to check out um, Fandangos, Google uh, YouTube Musica de Veracruz and you'll see what I'm talking about. And oh, it's my favorite. I miss, I miss that. That's beautiful. The second thing uh, is I love for, I, literally everyone is typing so much into the chat. So much love. Uh, I'm going to ask people to come on screen and if you want to just do a quick hello uh, to Marisol and do a quick thank you, uh, please do now. Oh, thank you guys, David, <laughs> Sabine, Hadiya, Nikita, Khalil, Raquel, Admira, saludos a todos. How awesome, you guys. I hope to, uh, to, to see you guys sometime on stage, you know, sharing some music sometime. Yeah, I think we all hope so, too. Yeah. Uh, and much more of you uh, up on stage playing for us. Thank <laughs> you again so, so much, Marisol. Uh, Y'all, uh, if you want to say thank you as you're signing out, you can feel free to unmute yourselves and say thank you. But I want to also make sure to say thank you to Diana and to Laura. Uh, and again, to you, Marisol, mm -hmm. for um, making us feel so at home and uh, for for. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely feel very inspired and, and um, feeling closer to home in, in a way that I haven't in a long time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. Thank you all, man. Thank you. Much love to you all. OK, stay cool. safe. Wear your mask. Practice your instruments. <laughs> all right, y'all. Feel free to uh, say goodbye on your way out. And Bye, thank guys. You. Thank you. Bye. Hasta luego. Bye. Bye.